Hi everyone, it's T.A. Barron. Welcome back to my writing room. How would you like me to read another chapter? Let's do chapter 11. Days went by, days that felt like weeks to Anna. The air hummed with insects and rustling leaves, and sunlight warmed the sand late into the evening. Summer had truly begun. These were the days Anna usually loved most, but now she barely noticed, for her mind was filled like the shallows at high tide with questions about Sash. When would he come for her, and would he still want to take her to the willow? As she stepped along the water's edge one late afternoon, the cool waves licked her feet. Wet sand slid between her toes, and she wondered about her coming journey with Sash. Would it really be as safe as he thought? What if all tree spirits weren't as kind and playful as he was? Mayhaps some of them really were ghouls. She shuddered, remembering that face in the forest and all the master's gruesome tales of poor creatures killed by ghouls, creatures whose eyes had been ripped out of their skulls, whose skin had been torn to bits by cruel claws, and whose bloody innards had been draped from the trees. <sighs> Seeing old Burl, she strode over and sat on one of the fir's knobby roots. That familiar smell of his, both tart and sweet, rolled over her like a wave and calmed her as it always did. As she sat there in the cool shade, Eagle, who had been busy pecking clamshells on the beach, hopped to her side. Anna gazed up into the layers of needled branches. What should I believe, Burl? Is Sash really a tree spirit? She tilted her head slightly. Are you? The tree gave a quiet creak of its trunk. No more. She closed her eyes and rested her head against old Burl's trunk. She could almost feel something in there. Something that stirred with life of its own. Was it a spirit? Or just a bark beetle? She couldn't be sure. Her eyes opened and turned to the forest and what lay beyond. The far ridge was covered with mist, like a blanket that someone had woven from wisps of cloud. Was it that place, really, that drew her so much? Why, and why, to the high willow, the memory of her mother, or something else? She shook her head. She couldn't be sure of any of this. Maybe she wasn't even really remembering her mother, but only those songs that her mother might sing. Songs that blew like the wind, yes, and beat like a heart. That evening, after a supper of crab meat cakes and mackerel soup, the master checked carefully all the door and window latches. Can't be sh too blasted careful, he grumbled. Tis a full moon tonight, and them ghouls will be out a-prowling. He swung his face toward her. The orange glow from the hearth flickered on his brow, as if his thoughts were on fire. You haven't seen any more bears recently, have you, girl? Anna looked up from the leggings she was trying to repair. No, she answered truthfully. But she frowned, wishing she could open her whole heart to him the way she could long ago when she was little. Good. The old man reached for his pipe, stuffed some dried kelp into the bowl, and then cast it aside. Ah, I'd be too thundered and tired for even a smoke. These summer days be long ones, and brutal. Anna felt a surge of sympathy. You've done well, sir, with your catches. Well enough, he replied, his voice a touch softer. Gotta keep us fed, I do. His gray eyes glowed like coals in the firelight. He looked at her almost warmly. 
You're getting bigger, girl, and I want you to keep on growing. She grinned at the corners of her mouth. That's why I need to lengthen these leggings and why you need your sleep. She wasn't sure, but he almost seemed to grin himself. Now, get on to bed with you. Moments later, Anna lay on her pallet of straw. She watched the firelight flicker on the thatch above and felt warmed by something more than the hearth, and she knew that she would sleep well tonight. But she was wrong. She rolled. She turned. Bits of straw poked at her neck, and someone was calling to her, calling her name. Anna, the voice called. Roanna. She sat up. Fingers of moonlight were reaching through the cracks of the shutter, groping at the edge of her pallet. She listened, trying to hear the voice that called to her. All she heard, though, was the splash of surf outside the cottage. Yet someone had truly called. She was sure of it. Sash? No, not him, but someone else. Aye, someone she knew. But who? And she could still hear that voice now not with her ears, but deeper, in her bones, outside, right now, waiting for me. She stood up and walked across the earth and floor. The master, I mustn't wake him. He needs to sleep. Almost in a dream, she tiptoed past the master, sounding like he was in a deep, deep sleep. Ever so quietly, she glided to the door. When her hand touched the latch, though, she froze. Should she really do this? Was there something wrong with opening the door? Something she couldn't remember? But the pull to go outside was just too strong. She slid open the latch. Cold night air slapped her face and flowed right through her grass night skirt. She shivered, then stepped onto the beach. Old Burl stood motionless, watching. The fir's branches glittered in the silvery light of the moon, and behind, the great globe was rising over the forest, glowing brighter by the second. The rising moon! Had the moon somehow called to her? She watched, entranced, as it lifted over trees and into the sky as dark as octopus ink. Its light made a pathway across the clouds, a pathway that shone like the sunlit sea. Suddenly she caught her breath, for the shining path led across the sky and straight to the highest knoll on the ridge and ended at the single tree that stood there all alone. I, the high willow, had never, ever looked so clear as it did Tonight, right now, its arching branches seemed to glow with a light of their own. Anna knew, in a flash, who had called her name. The willow! She stepped closer to the forest edge. I will come to you, she thought. I will. And I promise... Thunder and blast, girl! What be you doing out here at night? The master stood at the cottage door. He glared at her, the moonlight in his eyes as bright as lightning bolts. Then, as he saw where she was looking, he strode over and seized her by the shoulders. I should have known you brainless child, looking right into the eyes of that ghoul up there on the ridge. But, 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 she sputtered, it's not like that. What? He squeezed her shoulders. Are you saying there's no ghoul up there? Ow, she squealed, pulling away. I'm saying mayhaps there's more to that tree than we know. He took her again and squeezed her. Oh, master, please, you're hurting me. His face twisted, and he relaxed his grip. That tree, that tree be terrible, dangerous, terrible. Surely you know that by now. She shook her head as mist filled her eyes. For a long moment, he peered down at her. His own eyes grew clouded. I just, I just don't want to lose you, child. Not after everything I... He caught himself. 
His tongue worked inside his mouth as if he wanted to swallow some words he just could not speak. Finally, in a raspy voice, he commanded, Now go, back inside where you belong, before those ghouls be coming for you. As the door slammed behind them, a new breeze arose, leaning on Master Burl. The tree's moonlit branches sagged lower and made a sound very much like a sigh.